Hey teammates, this is Khalid Wright, your CEO of Air Force Aid Society. And I want to welcome you to the Ask Khalif series. This is just an opportunity for each of you to get to know me a little bit better. Ask any questions about my personal, professional uh, life, the things that I enjoy, uh, just so we can connect on a, on a different level. So I definitely appreciate each of you being here, and I'm ready to get after it. So ask away. Some of my role models uh, happen to be Many of you probably know about uh, Joe Wimbush, who is the ultimate role model for me, who kind of helped raise me in the Air Force, helped me to become a professional, helped me to become a man. Lots of uh, information out there about about Joe and what he's done for me. But I also had a few role models that, you know, I never had the opportunity to meet, but I always looked up to when I was a younger guy and, and even still to this day. And one of them is Muhammad Ali. Um, you know, I loved uh, Muhammad Ali for his confidence, for his brashness, for his ability and willingness to say what needed to be said and not be concerned about what people thought about him. And I love the fact that he sacrificed his career and his championship uh, for, for something that he believed in, um, being a conscientious, conscientious uh, objector. So you know, I really uh, love Muhammad Ali. I love the man uh, that he became. I uh, loved watching his, his transformation uh, from the time he was young until uh, the icon that it became once uh, around the time he passed away. Uh, I also, for that same reason, admire Malcolm X. And uh, I loved seeing Malcolm X was one of the first books that I, I read as a young man uh, when I was when I was growing up and and, uh, you know, watching the movie and then later listen to his speeches. Uh, again, I loved what he stood for. I loved his transformation, seeing him go from, you know, a street criminal to a pretty radical um, sect of, of Islam until the Orthodox Islam. And, and just again, I loved uh, seeing people who stood for their principles and were able to speak their mind and, and stand up for all of us as African-Americans. And then the third uh, hero that I had was Bruce Lee. And you, you kind of see there's a pattern here. So same thing. Uh, Bruce Lee stood up for, um, you know, being able to teach his, his style, uh, Jeet Kune Do of of Kung Fu. And, uh, and then he was just, I think he just had a beautiful mind. You know, I love the way that he thought one of his favorite um, quotes uh, for me is, you know, be like water, right? So uh, just flow. And, and, uh, you know, he had so many other uh, interesting philosophies and quotes. Not only was he a great uh, martial artist, but he was a great human being and a great philosopher. So those were uh, my role models and heroes that uh, I look to. Being the CEO of Air Force Aid Society, it's, it's been amazing, uh, mostly because we have such an amazing team of professionals that, that we work with. And the ability uh, and the opportunity, I think, that we've taken to continue to take care of airmen and families has just been, you know, outstanding. You know, we're in the process of uh, a lot of changes, and I think, therefore, the better. Um, we're always trying to figure out how we can serve more airmen, more families, uh, more guardians uh, as well. As you know, um, we, we support the Space Force as well, so airmen and guardians. And uh, it's just been, it's, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I love our team, every single person that's, that's on the staff. Um, we haven't gotten to spend near as much time together like most, most organizations because of COVID. But, but overall, I would say this is the best job that I could have asked for coming out of my time uh, in the Air Force. So pretty, pretty excited about all the different things to come. And, and like I said, love the opportunity that I get to work with my teammates every, every single day. Has it been what I, has been the CEO of Air Force A Society been what I expected? It absolutely has, uh, just because, you know, I, I spent some time on the board and I was familiar with the organization. Uh, the team has responded well to my style of leadership, at least from my perspective. And, uh, you know, we're making progress, making a difference in the lives of a lot of people. So it's, it's absolutely been what I expected. Well, Air Force A Society had already started to pivot, had already pivoted by the time I became the, the CEO. And I, to me, it seemed like it was seamless. Um, everybody went home right at the beginning of the pandemic, but 
we didn't miss a beat. If you look at our financials, if you look at the results from uh, 2020, we did just as much and in some cases even more uh, financial assistance, emergency assistance, scholarships. We continue to, to execute our community programs and we were able to do it relatively efficiently. So uh, I, I think our team responded very, very well to the pandemic and being able to, you know, take all of our operations and work from home. You know, clearly there's some challenges um, working remotely, but I think we handled them uh, extremely well. at all no absolutely not because uh, most guardians of a majority of guardians are just former airmen uh and then there are some new uh, folks who had just entered the space force either through um one of the commissioning programs or through the basic military training and it's just it, it it operates the same way you know most space all of the space force bases um they have an airman and family readiness center on them that's run by the air force and so the vehicle that we use to support the airmen and guardians is the same and there's really you know no, no difference in how we help a guardian and, or how we help an airman well the things that the new things with the air force aid society I'm really excited about uh, one of the biggest things I think is that we've expanded eligibility to all um, Air National Guard and Air Force Reserve Airmen, uh, regardless of status. You know, in the past, you had to be either um, on Title 10 orders so on active duty status um, for at least 15 days in order to receive. Uh, assistance from us. And so we've recently just expanded that to any guardsman, any reservist, regardless of the, the status that, that you're in. We think it's important that we take care of all of the, the airmen and guardians that fall within the purview of the Department of, of the Air Force. So very excited about that. Uh, one of the uh, things that we've also taken on, one of the new programs is uh, pet transportation uh, assistance. And so uh, many people might not know, but uh, spaces for pets are very, very limited when you're traveling from from overseas, when you're either going or coming. I think it's limited to uh, 20 spaces um, in the cabin, and that's for smaller pets, and then 10 spaces uh, below the cabin in the in the cargo hold area, and that's for your larger, larger pets. And so many of our airmen and guardians have incurred costs ranging from $500 to $5,000. Um, in order to fly their pets either back home or to get them get them overseas. And, and so uh, what we've done is we've developed a grant that will uh, provide assistance, initially a $1,000 uh, grant. And if they need more, then we'll take each case individually and decide, you know, how we might want to handle that. But initially, I think this is a great uh, program and uh, really looking forward to helping more airmen and their family, airmen guardians and their families with respect to the pet travel assistance. Uh, we're gonna phase out the car care uh, program, not, not getting a lot of use out of it, uh, but we'll find other ways uh, to provide that community outreach. We're gonna continue to uh, support spouse employment programs and certainly our child care programs uh, is, is one of the biggest uh, things that we do from a community outreach standpoint. You know, another thing that's new is, is you know, we 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 just recently got the ability to transmit money to our clients through Zelle, um, and so we're hoping to bring on things like PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, and other ways that that people uh, receive money these days. And so we're really in the process of reinventing ourselves and how we operate, how we do business, uh, maybe bringing our our business model into the into the twenty first century. So. Uh, I think those things are are pretty exciting, and 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 all the while, what's going to enable that is uh, we're in the process of uh, an entire IT infrastructure upgrade, and so we'll be moving to Microsoft Dynamics 365 that will really allow us to be more efficient, um, more effective, continue to help airmen, guardians, and their families, and uh, you know, so lot, lots of uh, new new things coming. And uh, again, I think the team is handling it well because it is a lot of change and it's all kind of happening simultaneously. And, and uh, but but I'm excited and the team is excited as well. There really is no, to be honest though, there's, there is a, there really is no partnership, you know, right now. We just work directly with the, the airmen. I mean, we're going to approach some companies to try to partner with uh, Petco and PetSmart and 
and USAA and all of those. But right now, there's not really a partner partnership to to speak of. I don't. Well, in the next year, you know, we've we've kind of you know touched on where where we're going as an Air Force A society, really upgrading our infrastructure and really really focusing on execution. Um, I used to be a huge um, strategy guy, and I still do believe in strategy and, and big vision and goals. Uh, but I think what really gets you, uh, makes you money is being able to execute the strategy. And so in the next year, what you'll see us is a, an extreme focus on executing uh, the goals that we set for ourselves in, in the next uh, two to three years. And that's really doubling our fundraising efforts being more intentional about diversity and inclusion, particularly when it comes to our scholarships, uh, reducing the number of uh, loans versus and increasing the number of grants. So being more benevolent, giving more of our, our, our money away. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's great to talk about those things. It's great to have grand plans on how, how to do it. Uh, it's a whole different thing to actually execute. And so over the next couple of years, you'll see an extreme focus on execution, execution, e execution. And beyond that, um, you know, I'll be honest and frank with you. I don't know uh, because the world is always changing. The environment is, is, is changing. As you can see what happened last year, uh, it's great to have plans in, in place, but I think you always have to be willing willing to pivot. So again, we're going to focus on these next two to three years on execution. And uh, depending on what's happening in the world, what's happening in the nonprofit space, what's happening in the Air Force and the Space Force, we'll decide where we might be in the next five to, to 10 years. Yeah, so I'm, what I'm reading right now is, um, actually, I'm reading two books. One is I'm rereading The Advice Trap by Michael Bungay Stanier. And it's, and it's really just about, you know, kind of his, the subtitle is for us as leaders to stay curious a little longer. And, and it's in reference to coaching and counseling and being able to ask good questions as opposed to always giving advice. And because many times we, we do fall into that trap of somebody comes to us uh, with a problem and we immediately go to giving advice as opposed to asking questions, asking clarifying questions and helping the person resolve their own issues. And so that's, I think, a, a really good read. And um, I can't remember the name of the author, but the other book that I'm reading is called A More Beautiful Question. And it's the same thing. It's about uh, the power of questions and why we don't ask more questions. And um, so lot, I'm, I'm always trying to get better when it comes to you know coaching and um, counseling and having effective conversations, and so those are the two books that uh, are occupying my time right now. Yeah, the book I would suggest that people go up, go and pick up right now that it is a must read is "Talking to Strangers" by Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, I think it is one of the most profound works, uh, not only by Gladwell but uh, of, of this era, and it's really about how we misunderstand people who are not like us. Uh, and it dispels a lot of the myths that we have about, you know, how the things that we've learned about reading people, if somebody looks up and left, it means they're lying. And, and if somebody folds their arms, it, it means that they're closed off. And, and uh, so I really like it. And I recommend the audio book uh, just because he, you know, it's, it is a kind of a combination of an audio book, a podcast, and he uses a lot of real audio from some, some very intense in real life uh, cases and, and situations. Uh, the foundation of the book, it kind of starts off with the Sandra Bland uh, case, if you're familiar with uh, Sandra Bland, her episode with the uh, policeman in, down in Texas. So, uh, so if you get an opportunity, uh, download the audio version of Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. I guarantee you, you won't be disappointed. Uh, two fun facts about Khalif is, I don't know if this is a fun fact. Most people probably know that uh, I'm a golfer and I love uh, scotch and, and cigars. Um, but I'm also an aspiring uh, electric guitarist. And, and I mean like aspiring, aspiring, because I have a really nice electric guitar that, I, that a group of my friends gave me for my retirement last year. But it's been sitting, at, first it was sitting in my basement. 
So I moved it up to the living room and put it on a nice stand so I can look at it every day and it might encourage me to get some lessons, but it's still just been, been sitting there looking back at me. And uh, so sometime uh, this fall, I think I'm going to take the plunge and take some lessons and you never know, man, I might be the next Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. So one of our, our new programs is, uh, you know, now we, in, we've been decided to include uh, all guardsmen and reservists, regardless of status, uh, into our emergency assistance programs. Now, previously, uh, you had to be either on Title 10 or Title 32 orders for at least 15 days in order to receive aid from us. Now, doesn't matter if you're on status, if you're not, um, if you are a guardsman or, or reservist, regardless of status, then you're eligible for our emergency assistance programs. And we believe this is going to be um, you know, very, very important to making sure that we take care of our entire Air Force family. Yeah, so we're always looking for new new partnerships. And because we recognize that, you know, it takes a village uh, to raise a child, we can't do all of this alone. So uh, we'll be looking to establish new partnerships to help out with some of the new programs. And if anybody out there is interested in partnering, with Air Force Aid Society. Um, you can contact us at one of the links uh, that you'll see below. Uh, also the, those links to our Facebook, Instagram, uh, our email, our website will also be in the descriptor for uh, this particular version of the podcast. So uh, again, we're always looking to, to partner with other people and other organizations so that we can uh, help our airmen and guardians when they need us most. All right. Well, hey, that ends uh, the first session of Ask Elite. And uh, hopefully you got to know me and Air Force A Society just a little bit better. Uh, we'll keep doing this. And so I look forward to your questions. If you uh, subscribe to our podcast, um, you, you can see when the next episode will be. And really, anytime you have questions uh, for me or about the Air Force A Society, uh, feel free to reach out to us on any of our social media uh, platforms and I or our team will be happy uh, to help answer any questions that you might have. So thank you for all the support and we'll see you next time.